NASA using a giant catapult to throw rockets into space. That's right, but why you ask? Well, the expense involved with space travel is one of the most difficult obstacles to overcome, which is saying a lot given the other difficulties involved. Because of this, a significant majority of efforts made over the course of the previous several decades have been concentrated on finding ways to lower the cost of single launches. However, according to Jonathan Yaney, the inventor of Spin Launch, a true answer to the problem of how to reduce launch costs is to use a giant space catapult to launch smaller payloads into orbit. How is that possible? Well, join us as we find out exactly what NASA is attempting and discover if this crazy idea can actually work. Or is it just a giant space catapult fantasy? The idea of a space catapult is a simplistic one that has been thoroughly investigated ever since the beginning of the space age. The idea, which is also known as a coil gun or mass driver, makes use of a series of strong electromagnetic rails to propel payloads or spacecraft to escape velocity and release them in a horizontal direction. Ever since the early 1960s, NASA has been investigating the idea as a potential replacement for the practice of carrying out rocket launches. In addition, NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center and the Kennedy Space Center have continued to work on refining this technology. In this lab, engineers have been experimenting with the use of scramjets to propel spacecraft down a gas-powered sled or an electrified track in order to achieve a horizontal launch. This system employs the same technique as a maglev train in order to propel a tiny space aircraft into orbit at high speeds. Another use of the idea is a centrifuge which involves accelerating the spaceship or cargo on a curved track until they achieve escape velocity and launches. Hyper-V Technologies is presently doing research on a variant of the space catapult that is known as the Slingatron. There is yet a glimmer of optimism thanks to Jonathan Yaney, who is passionate about aerospace and has a lengthy history of co-founding companies. He has devoted the previous 15 years to developing companies in several industries including consulting, information technology, the construction industry, and aerospace. Now he has founded Spin Launch to launch satellites into orbit. Recently, the alternative launch service provider Spin Launch has conducted a test that demonstrates payloads carrying sensitive equipment may be able to withstand the enormous G-forces created by the company's suborbital accelerator. Over 150 investors, government officials, and space industry fans gathered on September 27th at Spaceport America in the Jornada del Murto Desert of New Mexico to see the latest test of Spin Launch's A33 suborbital accelerator. In a period of less than a year, the company has successfully tested its mass accelerator 10 times. As a point of comparison, Commercial passenger aircraft fly at a height of around 36,000 feet, whereas Spin Launch's long-term goal is to carry payloads at an altitude as high as 200,000 feet, all the way to Mars if possible. In the recent test, the projectile was equipped to carry test payloads for NASA, Cornell University, Airbus, and Outpost Space, a satellite maker. The test payloads, which came out unscratched after the launch and were successfully retrieved, are naturally suited for one another, with the launch mechanism that Spin Launch has to offer. The California company, which was established in 2014 by Jonathan Yaney, has its long-term objective of transportation of modest payloads into a geostationary orbit. The current Series B investment round for Spin Launch brought the company's capital to $150 million, an increase of $71 million from the previous round. When compared to traditional rockets, this one-of-a-kind method of delivering satellites might result in a considerable reduction in the amount of fuel used and the total cost of launching a satellite into space. The company's founder, Yaney, recently said that the data collected from flight tests will be very useful for Spin Launch and its customers. When it is completed, the full-scale model will include an arm that rotates at a speed of 5,000 miles per hour which will enable it to launch items to great heights. By the year 2026, 
Spin Launch intends to be capable of launching a wide variety of payloads, including satellites weighing up to 440 pounds. At the beginning of this year, Spin Launch and NASA came to an agreement under the Space Act, which was an exciting milestone for the firm. The purpose of the space agency's participation in the 10th test was to get expertise about the mass accelerator test flight environment and better comprehend Spin Launch's payload assembly and testing processes. To accomplish this goal, NASA supplied Spin Launch with a payload that would monitor the launch event. This payload is known as DAC, Data Acquisition Unit, and has sensors for tracking temperature, pressure, and humidity. Pre-flight qualification tests were carried out by both NASA and Spin Launch to assure that the DAC would remain undamaged while it was housed inside the centrifuge. After Flight Test 10 was complete, the vehicle used for the test launch was retrieved along with its components. Both the pre-flight certification tests and flight itself were successfully completed by the payloads that were supplied by Airbus, Outpost Space, and Cornell. The payload that was delivered by Airbus was a satellite sun sensor that is used for the purpose of orienting satellites in orbit. The outpost was responsible for providing an onboard flight computer. In the near future, planetary scientific expeditions will make extensive use of spacecraft of the centimeter size. Chipsats will be released in mass quantities from orbit, and as they travel through the universe and down the surface of the Earth and other planets, they will collect geographically scattered data sets along the way. Experiments done on the Spin Launch's suborbital accelerator allow the company to collect vital data that may be used in the planning stages of future planetary scientific expeditions that will use chipsets. Spin Launch is also making great strides toward completing its unique project, but there is still work that needs to be done. The company anticipates being ready to launch items into space in only four years. Nevertheless, because of the current infusion of capital, it is possible that this target date will be met. In addition, having NASA as a collaborator is very helpful in this endeavor. The A33 suborbital accelerator got off to an encouraging start, but the true test won't come until the larger scale version is ultimately created. Until then, the future seems bright for this project. If you haven't heard the latest warning from NASA about the Betelgeuse star explosion, then you'll really want to watch this video right here. Stay up to date with all the latest findings in the galaxy at space-news.co and subscribe for all the latest videos from Space News.